everybody's fallen in love with Joker 2. Joker, filet mignon is out in theaters. It's been out for a few days. It's being celebrated up and down the block. People praising the music. The crazy storyline that's basically a rehash of the first film again. The Clown Prince returning in all his former glory. Well, today I have returned to do a spoiler video on the Joker filet of fish and I hope you join me. Oh, if you want to know quickly, I did not like the film. But now let's talk about why. If you're like me and my good friend Arthur Fleck, you may find that you're often crying yourself to sleep at night. Hell, you might be crying right now. If you could pump the brakes for just a second, dry those eyes, and pop that subscribe button, I would appreciate it because that way you'll see more videos from me in the future. You could also hit the notification bell. It's somewhere. It's actually an icon of a notification bell. That's the giveaway. Okay, now that that's done and you've done that, cry on and I'll talk about this movie. Joker, Folia Poo Poo, starts off as I think we all expected, with a Warner Brothers timeless Looney Tunes-esque classic animated show. <laughs> we all knew that was coming. That's right, we're gonna get a tasteful four by three aspect ratio cartoon of the Joker up to his old tricks at the end of the first film when he was on that iconic set and he blew that dude's brains out. It's like Murray Franklin doesn't know how to take a joke. Anyway, it turns out that was a pretty big deal and it set in motion all of the chaos that would ensue shortly after at the end of the first movie. The big riots that take place, all those people dressed up with clown masks and makeup. The big uprising happens. And it really painted a dismal picture of where things could end up going if there was another film. Arthur Fleck, it would appear, has turned into the Clown Prince, or he has inspired someone else to take up the mantle. And who would end up becoming the real Joker that would take on the Dark Knight time and time again. Ah, uh, but no, that's not what happens here. Todd Phillips had another idea, another concept rattling around in that old noggin of his. What if we did a court jester film? Told in the stylings of music, of course. We'll get Lady Gaga in here as Harley Quinn, but we'll call her Lee. We'll, we'll call her Lee because we're dissecting characters. We're breaking them apart. We're taking their essence and we're boiling it down to the most boring place it could be. Oh, Harley's a crazy wild card who has a bat or a mallet and dresses all sexy. Let's get rid of all that. We'll just make her kind of a miserable, woman that checks her into clinics and falls in love with the clown prince just because she thinks he's edgy. The Joker, maniacal, steady hand, but also comes off as a trickster like things aren't planned out, but they very much are. He's a planner. He does think ahead, but he can also think off and on his feet. We're going to take that away too. We're going to take away the humor, the laughs, the wild side, and we're just going to make Arthur Fleck this pathetic loser of an individual who's got a lot of mom issues. He's got a lot of baggage. And we're going to unpack that even further, even though that's what the whole fucking first movie did. After the stupid animated intro, we see Arthur. He's watching TV in the prison. I think it's at Arkham. It doesn't matter. I th the movie takes place in New York City at one point. That's what's said. I, I just... Listen, it's clear that Todd Phillips doesn't give a shit about any of the source material. I don't even think he cares about the Joker in terms of the comic book, the animated series, previous movies. He just wanted to do his own thing. And he just so happened to make a massively successful first film that he's basically forced to do this again. But he wants to make a musical. He wants to tell a different story. So he'll just use these characters as kind of a vessel to tell that tale. When we first see Arthur Fleck, he's a shell of his former self, which already was a shell of a man to begin with. He's at his worst. He's at his lowest. He's skinny as shit. The guards all think he's a joke. They beat him. They taunt him. They pretend to be his friends out of some sick fascination when they all really despise him at the end of the day. One of the guards, Jackie, played by Brendan Gleeson, he's able to pull some strings for old Arthur. When in actuality, he doesn't give a shit about Arthur, but he's using the popularity of the Joker so that he can go to music class. I guess I don't really know how prisons work, but they go on field trips once in a while and Jackie takes Arthur to this music class where he's gonna see Lady Gaga's character, Lee. They're all singing, they're playing the piano. It's a very wonderful time. And Jackie informs Arthur that, hey, I can make this a thing on a regular basis. We can come back here. You can participate. You can just stand there. I don't really give a shit. I like singing. I like music. I don't want to be at Arkham. And as we know, Arthur already loves music from the first movie where he's dancing around like a dumbass constantly. But the pot is even sweeter here. 
because Lee's in the class and she's already made googly eyes at him. She did the whole <laughs> I'm blowing my brains out routine that he did in the first film. So sparks are flying, things are happening. And so Arthur's gonna get butterflies in the tummy. He's gonna see that someone's into him, for him, definitely, and not for the Joker. He's, she's definitely into this loser guy and not the cool, mysterious dude that's raising this army of assholes up. She likes that guy. Or does she? If you can manage to make it to the end of this shit show of a movie, you'll find out that answer. Or you could just listen to me for the next 15 minutes or however long I dragged this shit out for. Listen, Joker Fleadu was two hours and 15 minutes long for the same story told in a way more boring ass way. Joker doesn't kill anybody. He sits in his cell for half the film, often La La Land, but not like the movie, which is awesome. Often crappy Joker La La Land, thinking about Lee, who's able to just go wherever the fuck she wants all the time. What kind of prison system is this? She can check herself in and out. She can visit him in the hole when he gets thrown in there. And then we find out later, she lied about all of it. She doesn't have any issues. She lied to him earlier when she said she was a pyro and that she set her apartment on fire and that her parents are dead. Her parents aren't dead. Her dad's a doctor. They make plenty of money. So is it possible that they paid her way in here? The cops are crooked, we know. There's lots of variables. End of the day, who gives a shit? Because we have another song to sing. Dun, 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 ha, 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 I'm the Joker, la, 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 la. I mentioned this in my regular review, but half the songs in this movie have no spectacle to them. It's just Arthur or Lady Gaga or both singing kind of miserably together. We're off pitch and we're sad. Something about building a mountain. We're gonna build a mountain. We're gonna build a mountain. I love it, I love it, I love it. And na 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 Build a mountain. A mountain wherever he may go. Ooh. Sorry, I got uh, Sister Act in my head. That's a much better musical and a damn better movie than this crap. Because at least with Sister Act, you knew what you were getting into. Believe it or not, and this may stun some of you, a good amount of people had no idea that Joker was a musical. They didn't know because they didn't advertise it as such. Sure, if you paid attention to the trailers enough, you would definitely see, oh, that looks like they're, they're doing something there that's not regular stuff. They're singing or something. But for a lot of people, they're thinking, I really like the Joker. What are they going to do with the sequel? How are they going to elevate the material? How are they going to tell a new story? And they were not expecting a fucking musical. It's funny, before I started filming, I thought to myself, this will be a pretty lengthy movie. I have a lot to say about this. But then it dawned upon me, so little happens that there's really not a lot of spoiler stuff to say. Oh, Joker's miserably sad in this scene. How refreshing. Oh, Arthur's getting the shit kicked out of him. What a change of pace from the first film. Oh, there's Arthur and Lee escaping from the prison, prancing around, laughing and loving, loving and laughing. Arthur's been thrown in the hole for two weeks of solitary. How is he going to get out of... Oh, there's Lee. She just walked right in. Must have slipped the guard a $10 bill or a quick BJ. Who knows? Whatever it takes, right? She just goes wherever she wants. And those two actually bang it out real quick. His first time is going to be an experience he'll certainly remember. I had to imagine it kind of smelled in there. Not a very sanitary place for one's first time. Probably... Feces in the corner, some pee spots in another corner. Just not a, not a good situation to be in. No matter how hard your life is, folks, just remember, it's better than Arthur's. It's better than Arthur's. At least I hope. I imagine during this sexual encounter, Lee's looking down like, <clears throat> Arthur, I was hoping to build a mountain here, not a, not a molehill. Come on. Come on, buddy. You can do better than that. I want to build a mountain. This is more of a volcano and it's about to erupt. Whoa! Best five seconds ever. If you're annoyed by this sad sack of shits laughing in the first film like I was, <laughs> thankfully you don't get as much of it here. Of course, it still happens uncontrollably. He'll be walking down the hall. <laughs> He 
He's kind of like Harry and Lloyd from Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> There's a scene where he's chained up outside in the rain, laughing hysterically. This will go on for a minute or two. Looks beautiful, but it doesn't sound beautiful. <laughs> I'm better than Heath Ledger. This performance is better than Heath Ledger. <laughs> Does it seem too forced? Catherine Keener's in this. She's gonna show up every once in a while to give advice to old Arthur, tell him how to act kinda normal. Because the big play here is that we're going to court and she needs to make it seem, because I think she believes this within her heart of hearts, that the Joker and Arthur are split personalities. Arthur's got himself a devil riding in the passenger seat and he needs better care. It's not his fault that he killed five people maybe six it was the joker's fault and that's what they need to convince a jury of and that's going to be the entirety of the second half of this film how riveting but lee's going to be a fly in the ointment not only are her and joker an item she has also taken residence in his old place and we got a baby joker on the way that's right lee's preggers we're gonna build a mountain we're gonna build a mountain. Ooh, building a mountain. Ooh, 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 ooh. <sighs> Brief uh, sidebar, if I could just speak to you over here. There's a lot of smoking in this movie. I was half expecting all of them to die from lung cancer before the final credits rolled. Like seriously, there isn't a scene that goes by where they're not taking another hit. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm not clutching my pearls over it. Like, oh no, they're smoking. No, I just, I found it kind of annoying. <laughs> it's like, half this movie is just bumming cigarettes. I've seen Shawshank Redemption. I understand that it's a currency, but uh, come on, let's, let's move past it. Let's get somewhere with this fucking movie. Maybe that's the problem is I was so annoyed at so little happening. All the little things were bothering me more. Kind of like the couple in front of us who decided halfway through the film to bust the phones up in the air and start taking selfies. Oh, what a great picture that's going to be. Hey, let's snap one quick with the exposure on max brightness, of course, because everybody should be ruined while you're doing this. And what kind of photo is that going to be? The flash goes off. It hits you two dumbasses like deer in the headlights. And what? It's just you two and a dark background in chairs. Oh God, get that on social media right away. Put that on Insta. We got to get that on the gram. Fam, I, for a second, thought I was going to be turning into the Joker. We're going to build a mountain. <laughs> Wipe out. Sorry, I lost myself in the moment. Where were we? As with every spoiler video, I'm all over the place with my thoughts, but you should just expect that from this point on. I pointed this out in my regular review, but something that bothered the shit out of me, outside of just the music in general coming in for no reason, not really progressing the story in the slightest, just telling emotion through the music, was that anytime something fun, fascinating, somewhat interesting was gonna happen, Bam! We cut away to music. There's a scene where Arthur's trying to tell his side of the story with an interviewer. And as the interview pushes into him or presses him on things, I'm leaning in like, okay, we're doing something here. Something's building up. And then bam, we cut to some artsy bullshit musical. Hate that crap. All right, back in the courtroom. We're going to spend weeks here as they deliberate, as Arthur pleads his side of the story, as he starts turning more into the Joker, because Lee has decided, in her infinite wisdom, to get Arthur to throw away the disguise and become the clown prince he was really born to be. Put on the face paint, fire your attorney, and just present yourself. Full cock out. 
And so he does all this. Witnesses are called to the stand. The roommate from the first film, AKA Domino from Deadpool 2, she's up there talking about the guy. We have the little guy from the first movie, his boss. He takes the stand, and this is one of the first dominoes that's gonna fall, that's gonna tell Arthur Fleck that, you know what, this Joker guy, he's a clown. And not in the fun way, in the hurtful way, in a way that's getting people killed and ruining lives because his boss breaks down. He said Arthur was one of the only guys that never made fun of him. He respected him and they, he was just deep down a good person. And this really got to Arthur. Arthur's like, shit. This whole Joker thing's really not working out like I thought it would. Lee and these other crazy ass weirdos seem to think I'm cool, but no one else does. And they seem to only like the Joker, not the guy that really exists underneath the facade. Arthur does some soul searching. He heads back to the prison where they're gonna sing When the Saints Go Marching In for the 18th time. I believe that's the song. I, I, I can't be bothered to check. And one of his scrawny friend prisoners, he starts singing and won't stop. This is at the point where I knew the cops were gonna beat the shit out of him, possibly kill him. They kill him. He's over there. Come on, Joker. Uh, when the Saints go marching in. Uh, when the Saints go... <laughs> what are you doing? When the saints go, ow! Why'd you do that? When the saints go, you're choking me. I don't know if you realize it, but you're choking. I think I skipped out on a scene right before that. Well, I skipped on several, but there's a moment at the court hearing where the Joker starts shitting all over the cops. He's like, the security guards are losers. They suck. Everybody sucks but me. And they did not take kindly to those words. So they stripped Arthur down. They threw him to the ground in the men's bathroom and do unspeakable things to him. I guess that's up for our interpretation. Short for interpretation. Some say they had their way with him sexually. Others say they just gave him a good old-fashioned ass whooping. I myself like to think it was a bit of each. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I don't... Again, I, at this point, I'm pretty checked out in the film. It doesn't really matter. Nothing phases me. We see Arthur get beaten, thrown against walls, punched in the back of the head. It's all the same song and dance. Huh? It's all the same song and dance as the first one. And so it is after these dominoes fall, the beatings, the dead kids singing when the saints go marching in, the sad boss, that Arthur decides, you know what? This is not who I want to be. I have to be true to myself. And so he presents for the jury the final piece of evidence they need to make their ruling. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the Joker, Arthur Fleck, we're the same. We've always been the same. I just wanted to make people laugh and notice me. But they didn't notice me, they noticed my alter ego. The guy that I was pretending to be, and it's gotten people killed. And I actually, by the way, killed my mom too. I didn't kill five people, I killed six. And that turns out made their ruling very easy. They found him guilty on all counts. And as the verdict is starting to come through, a huge car bomb goes off, blowing up the side of the courthouse. He starts fumbling out of there. And keep in mind, everything in this movie takes an hour and a half. So he doesn't just walk out of the courtroom slowly. He's like, uh, wha, I'm gonna build a mountain. Uh, uh, and that was just him getting off the ground. There, there's like 15 more steps to just get outside of the courthouse. Should also be noted that Harvey Dent was the attorney going up against Joker. This scene probably got people speculating. I know I got myself doing that. Oh, the bomb blew up. It probably took off half of his face. Then he becomes Two-Face. And when the camera did cut to him, he certainly had a bunch of debris on one side of his face. Didn't look that bad though. Probably wash it off in the shower. A little bit of soap, some lotions. You'll fix that thing right up something fierce. But again, I also, I don't care. This movie's a lackluster waste of time. And when I finally think it's mercifully coming to an end, it's really not because now we have to have a chase scene. One of the Jokers outside sees that Arthur Fleck is out there. He knows him because he's a celebrity. He's probably watched the, the movie based off of him 20 or so times. Pulls him into a car with another Joker character. They drive away. And this is the point in the movie where I was honestly pissed off. 
Because this film looks beautiful from front to back, and we finally get to see some Gotham shit, or New York, or whatever we're pretending this is, I was frustrated because it looks so good. And this is the first piece of action in the entire movie where a car smashes into the side of one of the Jokers as Arthur is running in the foreground. It's chaotic, it's intense, it's fun, and it's short-lived. And before you know it, Fleck is on the stairs from the first film, looking up at Gaga's Lee. Lee, zero fucks about this guy anymore. Hey, I've escaped from jail. We can be together now. Yes, you and no me, just you and Fleck. No, no Joker. We don't, we, Joker sucks. Boo, who wants to see Joker in a Joker movie? And Gaga's like, nah, no, no, that was the guy I liked. I like that dude. He was the cool bad boy. You, you suck. Who, who the fuck, who wants to watch you? Who wants to watch you? Is what I was yelling at him on the screen. And so he gets arrested again, and he's back in the jail again, where the movie started. Nothing's really changed other than Arthur coming to terms with who he really is. How utterly depressing. Was Lee really pregnant? Hard to know, she lied about everything else, and it doesn't really matter. And again, who cares? And so that's the film. Arthur's back in jail, he's sad and miserable, he'll probably get the death penalty down the road, and nothing left to say. All right, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed the content. Please, if you love what I'm doing, become a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. It's an amazing place to get exclusive content, including my favorite show, The Cringe. For $5 a month, you get access to this monthly show I do. It's very fun, satirical. Highly recommend checking it out. If you've seen this movie, let me know in the comments. I wanna hear your thoughts. Please like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you next time. Oh yeah, the ending. How did I almost forget the ending? Our favorite prison guard informs Arthur that he has a visitor at the front. Could it be Lee? Could it be his mom, resurrected from the dead? Could it be his old boss, appreciating what Arthur did for him? Could it be- Who cares? He's never gonna make it there, and it was probably no one. The guard was probably in cahoots with one of these shitty prisoners to get Arthur killed early. Because, my friends, that's exactly what happens. Arthur's on his way there. I've got a golden ticket. I'm gonna build a mountain. Oh, what, oh, what, who are you, strange person that looks more like the Joker and acts more like the Joker than I ever did in my two movies I got for some reason? Hey, <laughs> you, you remember me? Remember this face? I was earlier in the film kind of just looking at you from across the way, giving you the snake eyes, giving you the stink eye, giving you the queer eye for the straight guy, whatever, any, any eye you want to think of. I was over there. And I want people to know the real story of how the Joker was created. Not through you, not through some schizo, whiny, mamby-pamby baby, but through the psycho, the serial killing badass. I want them to tell that tale. Now this is the story all about how the Joker got twisted, turned upside down. <laughs> If you'd like to take a minute, just lay right there. I'll tell you how I became the Clown Prince of Bel Air. I couldn't rhyme Arkham with that in any way, shape, or form. So I just, I ended it how it actually goes in Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Anyway, yeah, he's the Joker. <laughs> Great. Arthur lies on the ground bleeding out as a blurred version of the real Joker is in the background, cutting his mouth up with the knife he just used. <laughs> You wanna know how I got these scars? Oh my God, it's the Heath Ledger Joker. It's all connected. No, I mean, again, it doesn't matter what he is, who he is, just this, this movie is a complete and utter waste of time and a failure on all fronts. Joker filet a douche has no purpose other than to make money. And because the studios probably demanded it, the director came back, but he didn't want to tell that story. He's done with the DC. He wanted to make a musical. He wanted to showcase Lady Gaga's talents. He wanted to go surreal with things and really subvert expectations, really own the audience, clown them almost for liking the first one so much. What a, what a subversion of expectations. If we've learned that over the years, subversions of expectations almost always pay off in the long run. So sarcasm. And so there you have it, the Joker origin story that took two films and four hours to tell.
because he's not the Joker. It's that other guy that killed him at the end. That's the Joker. The Joker, I mean, the Joker is, is the writer and the director of these films and how he played us as fools. If I missed anything, I probably didn't miss it at all. I just don't care to talk about it. But let me know your thoughts for realsies. Put it in the comments below. Like the video, subscribe. Again, think about joining that Patreon. I'd appreciate it. It's, it's a one-man band over here. I have a full-time job, a family. It's tough to juggle all this stuff, but I like it. This YouTube channel is my Joker. Maybe not the best analogy, but you get what I'm saying. And hopefully, I catch you next time. We're gonna build a mountain.